Hey everyone, look out, it's snow joking matter. The UK has been so cold that the pickpocketers have been keeping their hands in their pockets and the counter-terrorism police have considered extending their remit to combat both ISIS as well as just regular ICE. ICE? Anyway, it's been a while since the UK last had a winter, you know, nearly a year in fact. And as usual, there's the shots of slow-moving motorways, roving reporters wandering through deserted small-town high streets. And my personal favourite, the shot of hundreds of children sledging and hanging out at the park. It's never explained quite why the school run was impassable, leading to the closure of the schools, yet the road down to the big snowy hill was apparently clear enough for the Range Rovers and Volvos for the middle-class mums to get through. Um, in the meantime, though, lots of trains have been cancelled, although Southern Rail customers have been told that their trains will run to the usual timetable, by which of course I mean you may as well just roll a dice to see if it's going to turn up or not, and Scotland was forced to issue a red weather warning, which is obviously worse than an orange weather warning, but it's still probably preferable to a yellow snow warning. Ugh. The snow has given the news agencies something to talk about though, apart from Brexit. There was a series of speeches this past week with very little in the way of new information, and it's telling that most people were less interested in Jeremy Corbyn's opinion on the customs union than they were in the fact that there's a few inches of snow landing in his North Islington constituency. Northern Ireland remains a point of contention with the EU attempting to force a situation where a no-deal outcome would by default involve Northern Ireland somehow retaining all the EU rules and oversight, effectively coming under the sovereignty of Brussels rather than London. A policy presumably borrowed from Nicola Sturgeon, actually. Um, Theresa May decided to borrow an idea too, suggesting five tests purposefully designed to fail, an idea borrowed from Gordon Brown in the Euro debacle. Well, that's where we are. British leadership relying on borrowed ideas from one of the worst Prime Ministers in the past half a century. Oh dear. Anyway, see you next week if you like these clips, subscribe.